Hi everybody, it's Julie. Welcome to Hello Monday. Today I'm going to be doing a very soft layered watercolor effect on these hydrangea images. and I love how this card turned out. I'm working with the Mondo Hydrangea stamp set and believe it or not, I only used one stamp set. I know, it's crazy, right? <laughs> Usually we're reaching for all kinds of things and mixing them all up, but I was able to keep it all within one stamp set. So I'm going to ink up first with some archival ink. This is by Ranger, and this color happens to be plum because I thought this color would really help me pull off the look I was going for instead of black or some other color. So I'm kind of rotating and spinning my stamp around as I decide where to stamp them. I'm going to go with a landscape layout this time or a, what do you call it? horizontal instead of vertical. And I find that when I'm doing kind of trying to create this random background effect, it's easiest when I take the largest elements in the stamp set that I want to work with and get those into place first. And usually I kind of have them a little bit kitty corner from each other. One is going to be larger than the other. And then I'll come in with the smaller elements like the leaves and the tiny blossoms and kind of fill in those gaps where I feel um, the white space is just a little uh, vacant and it feels a need for just a little bit more imagery to kind of keep the balance going the way I want it. So now that I've got that set, it's time to go ahead and start watercoloring. I'm using the Kudatake Gonzai Tambi watercolors and I've already added some water to the colors I think I want to work with. I wasn't quite sure, uh, you know, which of the colors of the blues and the deep greens I wanted, but I just grabbed some of those and I loaded up my Pentel Aquash. This is a water brush with a nice reservoir in it. This is my favorite um, water brush to paint with, watercolor with. And I'm diluting the colors by squeezing the water out of the brush and I've loaded the color onto a porcelain palette so I can really dilute everything. So I'm going to be working primarily from the palette that I've made with these diluted colors. And I wanted to create a really nice soft, I guess a soft aqua teal color, just a wash over all the images first. Because I'm going to be layering these colors, I wanted to start off soft. And of course, because I use the archival ink, it is waterproof, bleed proof, so I'm not going to have any muddying of the colors. The outline of the images will stay true. So I'm just going to go around and very quickly wash this color over the top. I'm not being particularly careful. Um, I am, for the most part, staying inside the lines, but if a, a little bit of it slops out, I, I don't get too worried about it. <laughs> So the next step is to be patient and let this dry. And then I'm going to clean off my brush here. And then I decided I wanted to add some kind of a chartreuse color, but that isn't part of the Kudutake uh, Gunzai Tambi palette, so I'm going to have to custom mix it. So I'm actually going to load up, added some water to the colors I thought would work to create this custom color, and then I'm going to transfer those colors onto my porcelain palette, start adding some water to dilute and mix. So I've got kind of a yellow and then a mustard I added and then a really bright spring green. And then I decided then it was just a little too green still. So I'm going to bring in more of that musty, that mustard color and tone it down so I get more of a real chartreuse green, kind of a yellow green, but very definitely chartreuse. So now that I'm happy with that color, I can go ahead and start coloring over the top of my dry petals. And I'm not completely filling in the flowers. I'm just adding um, a little bit of this color here and there. And a lot of times, instead of brushing, I'll dab the color over the top because I want kind of little puddles. And I love that variegated look. I don't like a perfectly blended look when I watercolor. I like it to be splotchy and painterly looking. And so I find that if I just dab, I, I get a better result. And that's just me, you know probably because of my technique is <laughs> I need to study up more formally on watercolor. I signed up for some classes. I need to go watch the lessons, but, <laughs> but um, anyway, this is pretty much my method, the way I tend to do things because I get in a hurry and <laughs> start splashing that color on. So then I came in with the darker color and I'm just going to add that third layer of color. After the chartreuse was dry, I waited for that to dry. And then I came in with this darker color and just going to add that in different spots. This is just going to help create some contour and more uh, depth and dimension with my images. And then at the very end, once that was all nice and dry, I decided it was looking kind of blah and it needed something else to help make it pop. So I'm going to take this plum color, maroon color, kind of a deep, rich, almost a cranberry color of red and add that to my porcelain palette there. And then I'm just going to start creating kind of a light wash over the centers of those flowers to help bring out the plum color in the ink that was used to stamp them. And this is 
going to start making those flowers pop. So I'll just go around very quickly and add a light wash of color. And I'm still using the large size Pentel Aquash, which um, it has a really nice point to it. So you can get in there into, into fairly tight spots. So that's a great thing about these brushes. And then I decided that it wasn't enough. I wanted more contrast. So I just added more concentration of color. Didn't use the watered down color. So I could just swipe some more intense uh, maroon reddish color there on the sides of those flower centers and I felt that really helped make it um, pop a lot more. And then for some extra dimension I thought it would be fun to add some shading and shadow to the flowers by using this yellow color. I didn't want to get too heavy and dark because I really wanted to keep this card pretty light and airy. So I'm going to use this mustard color and then dilute it down and then come along the edges. Now everything else is dry. I didn't start doing this step until everything else was dry so that I wouldn't end up contaminating the other colors or muddying them. So now I can come in and I'm going to let the color kind of blend out and dilute out as I brush it away from the flower. So it's more intense in the areas that are closest to the edges of those flowers and leaves. And then I let it dilute out and just add more water um, as I get further away to kind of create more of a washed out effect. And the biggest thing with this is to just be patient and then when it's dry, you can move on to the next step. So I really love the dimension that it added and the depth that it added, um, but I was very light handed with it. So now I'm going to pounce the surface with an anti-static pouch and then take the greeting, thinking of you, which is a really nice brush stroke. And I decided to ink it up with a Versamark and then I'm going to emboss it in gold. And I'm going to lay it right over the top. There's not going to be a lot of layers on this card. And use the Hero Arts gold embossing powder. This font work is a little bit uh, thicker than you know some finer detailed sentiments. Um, that we have in the line. So I used Hero Arts Gold Powder because it's a regular grind, not super fine, but not overly chunky. And then one last finishing touch is to do the edges. And this is just kind of a fun thing that I often forget to do, but I'll take the Versamark pad and just tap it against the edge of the panel. And then I can pour embossing powder over that and I get a really super fine bead of gold embossing around all the edges and sometimes this is a really neat way to finish off a card it gives the feeling of maybe there's a metallic layer but really there isn't and then i put just a little bit of uh tape there along the back i didn't go crazy because i like having the edges kind of pop up a little bit just for some added dimension now one final embellishment is going to be these DIY epoxy dots that I made in the May newsletter article. So you'll have to go read about how I made those. I'm just gluing them into place. I had a bunch of them that I made and I stored them in a little jar. And then I'm going to use the Pico Clear Embellisher. Um, I love the fine tip nozzle on that. It never clogs on me. As long as I get that needle cap stuck right back in there, it just never clogs. And I love that about it. And it works great as a glue. It can be used as an embellishment, but it also works great as a glue. So I just glued down my DIY epoxy dots, which look like dew drops, sitting there on top of my flowers. And I thought it turned out great. This card has such a cool effect because I actually chose plum ink instead of black to do the stamping and then the watercoloring. All the supplies are available at ellenhudson.com and we have more still shots available at the classroom blog along with further details. Thanks for watching.